Hey guys, welcome to Pop Talk. I'm your host, Luke Fry. On the show today, this network loves its wine, and so do I. Uh, however, I thought I would mix things up, and we have Lelania Dubay here from the Hartford Flavor Company. We're gonna be making some clean cocktails and talking about this local liqueur company that's actually right in our backyard, which is super cool. Also, I'm really excited. Dr. Dory Gatter is here to talk about an issue that seems to be coming up a lot in entertainment news. So I think you'll find that pretty interesting as well. I'm so glad to be back. It's almost spring, of course, winter had just a few more inches or feet of snow for us left here in March. Um, however, hopefully we're out of that mess now. Um, speaking of a mess, uh, the 90th Academy Awards was at the beginning of March. If you watched my last episode, um, you knew that I was not a fan of The Shape of Water. Well, they swooped in and surprisingly stole the entire show. The film took home the win for Best Director, Best Picture, and my heart was crushed. Um, but hey, you can't win them all. And if I'm being honest, the show was really not that great. It seemed a little low energy. It felt like Jimmy Kimmel was just kind of going through the motions. <sighs> so speaking of low energy, um, it seems the Academy Awards actually sent some celebrities to the hospital. Yes, uh, Kendall Jenner swung by Mount Sinai ER hours before the Vanity Fair party. According to E! News, the reality star had an allergic reaction to a vitamin drip, but bounced back quickly and was able to get to the party without any issues at all. Thank the Lord, who wants to miss the Vanity Fair party? Uh, she's not the only one. Army Hammer was hooked up to a vitamin drip hours before the ceremony on his couch. He posted this picture on Instagram hours prior to the big night um, that his Oscar prep had taken a strange turn. Well, I would say I wouldn't expect to be hooked up to an IV hours prior to the Academy Awards. Um, he was hooked up due to the strong bout of the flu that he was having um, right before the Academy Awards. Again, he was able to attend though. Uh, he had missed the Film Independent Spirit Awards, however, due to his strong bout of the flu but again, he was totally okay to attend the Academy Awards. It seems to be this new trend that celebrities are calling these doctors into their homes and having an IV hooked up to them, you know, if they feel weak or if they feel, you know, drained a little bit. Um, us peasants who cannot have doctors come to our homes um, usually drink some Pedialyte. That's my new th thing. I absolutely love Pedialyte. It will bounce me back from the depths of you know what. Uh, so. Just a little tip, um, if you're feeling a little drained, that Pedialyte will get you back to where you need to go. Um, in other entertainment news, if you haven't been watching The Voice on NBC, I really think you should. Kelly Clarkson is the new host this season, next to Adam Levine, Blake Shelton, and Alicia Keys, which I like all of them, but Kelly Clarkson is the single most happiest person that you've ever seen on television. And you watch these shows and you really want hosts or coaches that will actually help the contestants and I think Kelly is a great casting choice for that show. Their ratings have been amazing. Uh, live shows start April 16th and the finale is May 22nd on NBC if you were wondering. Also side note, if you watched the Today Show and you know who Hoda Kotb is, um, she took over for Matt Lauer after that mess. Uh, she's recently written a children's book for her adorable daughter Haley Joy. Um, you can see her on the back of the book there. Um, well, Hoda and Kelly Clarkson actually teamed up to turn the book into a song, which is so cute. Um, all of the NBC Universal proceeds from each download of the song will be donated to helpusadopt.org, which helps couples and individuals with the cost of their adoption. Ugh, which if you know Hoda, like she just has such a sweet heart and the fact that she wrote this book and now it's a song and it's able to help others is just completely awesome. Um, speaking of singing competition shows, American Idol is back. It's too soon. I'm sorry. I, like, I can't get into it. It's like telling your child their goldfish died, and then your child mourns the goldfish, and then you buy them a new goldfish in a month, and you're like, surprised it's still alive. You can't do that. Like, they're not ready. They've already mourned the loss of the goldfish. Uh, Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, and Luke Bryan are the hosts. Um, I've seen some rumors that one of the hosts was showing up a little late, maybe causing some tension on set. Um, I don't really think said host really cares about the contestants as much as Kelly Clarkson would on The Voice, but my lips are sealed on that one. Um, so since I love to laugh and people say the darndest things, not just children, it's time for a new segment I like to call hashtag what? <laughs> What? 
All right, so if you're bored and you get on Twitter, you find some of the funniest tweets, especially some of the trending hashtags. So the other day I logged on, and the trending hashtag was, I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos, which if you've ever done that, you know how hard that hurts. And I knew that was going to be a good one, so let's go through a couple of them right now. At Sammy Salad tweeted, hashtag I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than order pineapple on pizza. I, I agree with that. I don't think pineapple should ever be on pizza. Um, at Walking in Heels tweeted, I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than collect all those scattered Legos from the carpet. Who wants to plan and clean up? No one. Uh, Patty Miller tweeted, I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than have to help my kid build the Death Star out of said Legos. Apparently, Patty Miller is not a fan of helping her kid build Legos. Yikes. Um, Lizzie tweeted, hashtag I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than watch a pimple popper video. I like those. I don't know. I like the pimple popper videos. I think they're good. Um, at It's Freakin' Jake tweeted, hashtag I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than be responsible for educating everyone who used then improperly using this hashtag. I think Jake might be a teacher or he's just really salty. Tori Ray tweeted, I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than pay my taxes. I don't want to grow up. I don't think any of us want to pay our taxes. At Chinny Chin Chin <laughs> tweeted, I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than listen to Fergie sing the USA National Anthem. Oh, poor Fergie. She can't get over this. Oh my gosh, if you guys haven't seen that, you need to watch it. It is pretty bad. <laughs> um, Phil Pointer, I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than have to listen to Nickelback. Oh, yikes. Shade on Nickelback. Oh, Phil. You just look unhappy, Phil. Come on, Phil. Maybe you need a little nickel back in your life. You never know. At Teresa Duran, I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than listen to my hubby's criticism about my gas. Yikes. Come on, Teresa. Oh, yikes. She looks like she might have a gas problem. Is that bad? Uh, Hello Friend tweeted, I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than eat a brownie with walnuts. I agree. Brownies should not have walnuts in them. That's gross crunchy with the chocolate and I agree hello friend hello we're friends um, Ariel tweeted I'd rather walk barefoot over Legos than step in a water puddle with socks on oh that's gross all right guys that was this rendition of a hashtag what So I've been reading a lot about celebrities coming out and talking about their struggle with anxiety. If you watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, that's a term that you hear pretty on the regular. Um, but this time it's a few men coming out and talking about their anxiety as well. Carson Daly opened up to NBC News saying, I really wear the way I am like a badge of honor. This is who I am and I'm proud of that. Also NBA star Kevin Love from the Cleveland Cavaliers opened up to Players Tribune, stating mental health isn't just an athlete thing. What you do for a living doesn't have to define who you are. This is an everyone thing. I can't agree with that statement more, and it was really refreshing for me to hear from male celebrities coming out talking about their struggle with anxiety as well. So I decided to invite local psychotherapist, Dr. Dory Gatter here to discuss anxiety. Thank you so much, Dr. Dory, for being here with me. You're welcome. Thank you for having me, Luke. Awesome. Welcome to the Pop Talk Lounge. Are you yes, happy to be here? This is great. I'm really happy <laughs> to be here. This is fun. All right. Awesome. So first off, um, like I said, I was reading a lot about anxiety in entertainment news. And I guess the first question I really want to start off with is at what point, whether you're a male or female, do you kind of, you know, step back and say, I have anxiety. However, I feel like maybe I can't, you know, uh, contain this, I can't handle this on my own. So when do you kind of make that step into, I need help? I think everybody's different um, depending on uh, what your personality is like. Um, usually when it's interrupting day-to-day -day living and it's hard for you to function, then people usually at that point want to reach out for some help. And why do you think we don't hear about it from men all that much? It's more acceptable for women usually to talk about their feelings than for men to talk about their feelings. Men are um, raised to be strong, silent types and to handle it all and not do any what we might look at as possibly complaining about anything. So sure. they're supposed to hold it all together. 
that terrible saying that men don't cry that's right. something that is not true men do cry right they just cry in private I guess they do I they, they do they, they more cry in private you know a couple guys going out for the evening are not going to talk about their feelings usually it's not mm -hmm. as accepted over a beer to talk about your feelings your anxiety your sadness and cry like women do true so they're left to bearing it on their own and um, I think they do need more support and it's great that it's coming out more yeah. that they can get connection for that it's normal exactly and I love that Kevin Love an NBA star yeah. so an athlete that men look up to yes. um, is coming out and saying hey I have a problem with this it's normal right. um, it's okay that you have this and one quote off of your site I really love is the only constant in life is change yes. and I think a lot of people don't realize that um, and one demographic that we kind of talked about previously that I feel like people don't recognize also have a lot of anxiety are young people and yes. young adults. Yes, yes, there's so much pressure. They have pressure to perform, pressure to be perfect, pressure to get to the next level of whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of anxiety. Um, we see it all the time. Tons and tons of kids coming in from the pressure of, the internal pressure, not just external. Sure. Yeah. Of, you know, graduating from high school, you have the SATs, you have, you know, applying to colleges, and then even after you graduate from college, finding a job, finding a job. you know, transitioning into that real adult life yes. um, is a huge transition for a lot of people as well, too, that you don't really think of these young people having yeah. these, you know, anxiety issues. They do. Much. They really do. It's prevalent with a lot of the kids that I see. Um, so you are part of the West Hartford Holistic Counseling Center. Yes. So what makes a holistic counseling center a little bit different than um, some other type of uh, counselor? Uh, we see people in a holistic light, which means we're looking at the person, um, body, mind, spirit, individually, not as a diagnosis. Okay. But really look at, looking at them and seeing uh, what's going on to affect how they're feeling what's going on in their diets, what's going on at, you know, in their environments, what's going on for them as far as their belief systems, and really, really honing in on how do we help them on all levels, not just looking at them as, a, like I said, a diagnosis or just a mental health issue. So what types of patients do you see at West Hartford Holistic? We see everybody. We okay. see little kids, we see adolescents, teenagers, individuals, couples, families. We see everybody. And what are some small ways, I'm excited about this because I think we can all use it, what are some small ways that you can mm -hmm. contain your anxiety or help your anxiety by yourself or on an everyday basis? Sure, so everybody has some degree of anxiety. We all do, it's natural. And so when it gets to be too much and you can't handle it in your system, usually what we do when we, when we feel anxious is mm -hmm. we start shallow breathing. We don't breathe deeply or we hold our breath. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Right. I feel like I've done that before. Right. So now that what, I'm going back to my anxiety-ridden memories. <laughs> right. So when we do yeah. that, we actually make it worse. Okay. So deeper breathing and actually exhaling for a longer count than an inhale okay. will relax the body, will bring on the parasympathetic nervous system, which tells your system that everything's okay. Takes you out of the fight-or-flight response. All right. So... Deep breath in. Deep breath in. So let's do it. Let's count a four. Exhale, count a five. I feel relaxed all the time. <laughs> I think that works. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and so that's something that people can do even if you're driving to work and you you're can, like, I have yeah. this huge meeting coming up. I'm so stressed. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do whenever I walk through the door. If you just take that long inhale and then even longer Longer exhale. exhale. Yes. You can do it one. anywhere. That is a great tip, and I think we're going to need some more tips from you in the future. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Uh, for if you guys me. have any questions about the West Hartford Holistic Counseling Center, you can check them out on Facebook as well as visiting westhartfordholistic.com. So thank you so much for coming. Yes, and, and you have a note. Yes, on okay. westhartfordholisticcounseling.com, okay. we have a download of free meditation. Um, like a podcast a po almost? Um, it's an audio. Okay. Yep, it's an audio that you can just download. It's free and it helps with anxiety. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And coming up next, we have the creatrix behind the Wild Moon Liqueur line. We'll be right back.
We'd love you to be a guest and come hang out in the Pop Talk Lounge. Are you a local business owner or organizing an event in the Hartford area and want to be a guest? Send us an email for more information on how you can be featured on the trendiest new TV show in Connecticut. If I may say so myself. (laughs) Hello, guys. Welcome back. My second guest is the creatrix and infusionary behind the Hartford Flavor Company. Please welcome to the show, Lelania DeBay. Hello, welcome. Hi, how are you? Thanks for coming to the Pop Talk Lounge, as I tell everybody. Very nice. Hope you're having fun. I like I the am. outfit. That's very nice. Thank it's you. It's very Pop Talk loungy. Awesome, I'm glad it I is. hit it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect, perfect outfit. So you are behind the Hartford Flavor Company. So first of all, how did all of this happen? Uh, it started because I couldn't drink anymore, and oh, that no, was unacceptable. That, was that un- is unacceptable. <laughs> um, I became gluten-free and chemically intolerant to all of the additives in alcohol, okay. and I had to stop drinking. Oh, and right. after about six months, um, I remembered uh, the cranberry liqueur that I had been making for Christmas gifts, okay. and remembered what was in it, and realized that it was very basic and nothing was going to hurt me in there. So okay. I made the lavender liqueur out of my garden, just went out to my garden and cut down oh, nice. some lavender. And oh gosh. it was lovely. Yeah, no, that's great. So for people who don't know or haven't heard of you, um, what is the basis of your company? So the idea is to take the liqueur concept, which mm-hmm. um, is always uh, a, a little bit too sweet or questionable on the flavor, um, and change it and make it um, flavor forward, okay. reduce the sugars and make it organic sugar okay. and take out all of the chemicals so that we can have a clean cocktail. Oh, I like that term, clean cocktail. Um, so you currently have seven flavors. Yes. So I'm just going to run through them. You have cucumber, you have rose, lime, cranberry, lavender, birch, and chai spice. What is chai? I don't even know what chai is. I know it's like a tea thing, but I've right. So I don't it's know the it spices is. in an Indian tea. Um, okay. So it's usually uh, this doesn't have the tea leaves in it. So it's okay. just the spices that make up that tea. It's very okay. distinctive. Cardamom, flowered, coriander, cinnamon, clove, fresh ginger, and black pepper. Oh, I've heard of coriander before. I just didn't know what chai was. I was like, I've heard people say like, oh, I like chai. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but okay. Sounds cool. Um, so out of these flavors, you were talking about cranberry was your, your OG flavor is what I would call it, your original flavor. Um, what is something that you really want to make? Like what's that next flavor you really want to come out with? Um, actually, I'm working on the next line. So oh. Harper Flavors' first line is Wild Moon Liqueurs. Okay. And the next line will be called Wild Botanics. <gasps> Ooh. And it's the it's the wild stuff that didn't make it into this line. Oh, are we hearing this information for the first time yes. here? Yes, on you Pop are. Pop Talk, <laughs> amazing. Um, and you have some really exciting launches coming up too. Do you want to tell us about that? Yes, um, we just launched uh, New York State. We're launching New York City nice. next week. Oh my gosh! And I'm launching Colorado the week after. Awesome. Yeah. So is that launching like you're going to be in those stores then? I'm going to be going to those markets and wow. uh, educating the public and starting to sell the brand there. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So I I just relocated here not long ago, and as soon as I heard about your company, I had to you know come see what it was all about. So do you want to tell people a little bit about your location that's literally two miles down the road right here? Absolutely. So we're right in Hartford, uh, 30 Arbor Street in the Parkville section. We have a little tasting room and a production facility. You're welcome to come and uh, take a tour of our facility. We give you a taste of the seven flavors. Yes, you do, which is why I had to stop by before <laughs> today. <laughs> and a cocktail. Yes. So we make very unusual cocktails with our liqueurs, and we like to change people's mind. And you have some events, too, at that location, Many. I've heard, about some like really cool like clue nights or like you guys have live music is that correct yep we have friday night flavor on fridays we have all sorts of different events um a crafted regional crafted event twice a year we have private events there all of the time 
uh, unusual, different kinds of stuff. Um, I'm also doing mixology classes Ooh, and tasting panels to help vote us for the next flavor that we launch. That's always fun. Nice. Or your next line <laughs> that you just line. announced yeah. is coming out sometime yeah. soon. <laughs> um, so out of these flavors, which one is like your go-to? Like which one do you like the most? My favorite is the rose because it makes cocktails you've never tried before. Oh, wow. So you previously worked in landscape design. So how have you kind of mixed that in with um, the Hard for Flavor company? Well, at, at first, when I first had the idea, it was a, a little bit hard for me to understand how I was going from landscape design to a distillery. Yeah, that's right? kind of a big right? jump, right? I feel like. Um, but I kind of realized that I was taking the plants and flowers that I love so much and preserving them in alcohol so that we could have a cocktail. And then I could, it was okay. That's that's amazing. I wish I could figure out how my skills could kind of go into something that's really cool like that. <laughs> and I'm still trying to figure it out. Well, coming up next, super exciting. We're actually going to be mixing up some cocktails using her liqueurs. And uh, we'll be right back, so stay tuned. Loving Pop Talk with Luke Fry? You should connect with us on social media. Why not? Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pop Talk LF for all the latest entertainment news, local hotspots, behind the scenes photos, and much more. Also, see what part of Connecticut I decide to explore next, or see a sneak peek of what's coming up on our next episode. Want to hear my opinion on a certain news topic? Well, tweet at us with hashtag Pop Talk LF, and we'll feature it right here on the show. Hello and welcome back. We're here with Lelania Dubay from the Hartford Flavor Company and we're going to be mixing up some of their signature cocktails. So let's get started. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, awesome. All right, first we're going to do a Miss Rose cocktail, which okay. is super easy. Um, I like to open up some Prosecco. Okay, <laughs> awesome. I love opening up that as well. The trick to opening up a bottle of Prosecco is to twist the bottle, hold the oh, cork still. Okay. Open it up as quietly as you can. That um, is very quiet. Pour it into a, uh, a flute. Okay. And you're going to leave about a uh, little bit of room at the top. Okay. And then pour on top the rose liqueur. Ooh. About an ounce. Okay. You get a nice color. And then I like to garnish this with a little bit of dried rose Ooh. petals in the top. What was this one called? Miss Rose. Okay. Miss Rose. Let's bring Miss Rose over here for a little taste test. Very good, very Isn't that light. Yummy? Very yeah, nice. It's very good. Yeah, wow. easy to drink. Very easy to drink. All right, number two. Yes, the number two is called a birch and bourbon. Oh, okay. And I like to start with a, a large ice cube. Oh, how do you make those blocked ice? So cubes? there's um, they come special trays that you can okay. buy silicone trays. Very easy. Makes sense. <laughs> I'm going to start with the uh, bourbon. I like to use uh, Litchfield Distillery bourbon. Okay. Um, but there's many higher quality bourbons. You want to put in um, about that's about an ounce uh, okay. to an ounce and a half, depending on your taste. Try it a few times and then uh, see where you like it. And then I'm going to put in. Uh, equal parts or just a little less of the wild moon birch. Okay. And I'm going to stir quickly with a black birch stick, okay. which you can cut up in your yard or you can use any kind of stick that you'd like. Okay. And then I'm going to take a peel of a very clean washed orange. Ooh. And this is the trick that ties everything together, mm -hmm. the citrus of the orange. Okay. So you want to squeeze it in. Get some of those oils released, wipe the edge. So not tuck a whole it in. lot of that orange, but just enough to kind of flavor it and give it flavor. that. Exactly. Nice. You're gonna mix it again and you're gonna serve it to your guest. Beautiful. Oh look, I'm the guest. Oh. <laughs> I like this Isn't like additive fun? too. I love how all of your cocktails kind of pull in like that piece of naturalness that you guys are all about at Wild Moon. Thank you. It makes it a little bit different. Who else has a stick out of their drink? Oh, and I do taste like that light of the orange Absolutely. in there as well, and it's a perfect blend. Yep, ties it all together. That's great. So number one, number two, all right. and our third one. Yes, number three, I've got uh, some mint leaves here, okay. and I'm going to take a uh, sliver of lime, and okay. I'm going to muddle those two together. Ooh. Not too much. You don't want to bruise the mint too much, just enough okay. to get the citrus 
releasing its flavor. And then I'm going to put in some ice. Okay. And I'm going to measure this. Okay. I'm going to do an ounce and a half of Wild Moon Cucumber. This is called the CT Cooler. It's one of our more popular drinks in the tasting room. Yes, I love cucumber, so I'll, I'm excited to try this. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I didn't bring the tonic. Well, that's all right. We can just add Prosecco <laughs> because that goes great with everything. <laughs> all right. Now we'll do an ounce of Prosecco. We can do two if we're going like. to shake it first. Oh, we're going to shake it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so pop it into a shaker. There we go. Everybody loves that sound. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> that gets everything mixing and combining. Okay. And then we're going to pour it into a Collins glass. Okay. And we'll top with more champagne. Yes, we are. So, can we call this the pop talk version of pop your pop talk version of, of your the cucumber CT cooler. cooler? Absolutely, I love it. Sounds good. Perfect. Pop talk cooler, and then we'll have a fun straw oh. in there. And I think I know somebody who likes your straws. Can we bring Dr. Dory on Absolutely. to try this one? All right, Dr. Dory, yes. have a taste. Let's see how it. All right. See how it is. The first original. Yes, pop -talk the cooler. the pop talk cooler, everyone. <laughs> so go there and order it. She will. They will make it. Oh, that's How's good. How's that good? Isn't that really yummy? Good. Oh my gosh, really yeah. Really good. Yeah. I love the straw, of course. Yes. Of course. Yes. Why She's not? She's <laughs> a huge fan of the straws. I am, I am too. Um, and then you had one more. You said possibly you could um, make for yeah, us today. Yeah, if you want to. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's yeah, do let's it. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to take uh, the shaker. Okay. And I'm going to add one ounce of our wild moon rose. Okay. And I'm going to add an ounce and a half of vodka. Uh, I like to use a clean vodka, something that's either organic or um, with sustainably harvested grains. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you, what makes a vodka, you know, on the cleaner side or, or healthier side of a vodka? Well, I like to, it depends on where it's made, how it's been sourced, okay. what it, where it's from. Um, and then I've got uh, some fresh organic lemonade. Okay. And I'll put two and a half ounces of that into the shaker. I can shake this if you would like. If you want to. Yes, that's what <laughs> I've been waiting for. <laughs> okay. And let me get some ice for you. Okay. So it's lemonade, the rose. Wild Moon Rose, okay. yep. And vodka. And vodka. Not hard. You always want to build it in the glass part of the shaker. Okay. Pour it in, slap it hard, and, and now hold shake. both sides and shake. Okay. I've never shaken with a glass. I always use like the top. I have the to top. do both sides. I'm <laughs> eating. <laughs> All right. And Thank now you. I'm going to shake it a little more. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wasn't enough. <laughs> the glass drain. Nice. And actually, we'll pour it into the coop here. Oh. So how did you learn to make all of these? Are you just, you know, kind of a connoisseur how you liked these beverages? Or did you kind of do some research on mixology or? I had always had a love for the cocktail okay. um, way before my time as a distiller. Can I try this one? Oh, yeah. OK. I'm going to have Dr. Dory try this one as well. This is called a Jessica Rose. Jessica okay. Rose. Yep. And uh, I always just love to make cocktails at home and jams and jellies and fun foods. So oh. this is not outside the realm too much. Just yeah. It's okay. just a little more fun. This <laughs> is amazing. If you guys want to learn more about the Hartford Flavor Company, you can like them on Facebook as well as checking out their location two miles down from right here. Um, you can also visit them at hartfordflavor.com. Thank you so much for being Thank here so and much. making us some amazing cocktails and creating a classic pop talk. Nothing CT like it. CT Cooler. Nothing so make sure it. you order this. <laughs>
I will get royalties, possibly. <laughs> we'll have it in the tasting um, room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, that's amazing. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Dory, for also being here as well. That's about all the time we have for today. So thank you for tuning in to Pop Talk with Luke Fry. And I think we're going to have a couple more drinks. So uh, see you next time.